prophet here, the lame man would leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb would sing. Now that was some of the works that Jesus did. And also it was prophesied that the dead would be raised. Now, if you remember in a lot of the places in the New Testament, Jesus went about doing good. Bible said healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He casted out devil, devils. He done a lot of good things. And he literally did raise people from the dead. Now, when he arose them from the dead, which Lazarus was one of them. And I believe there was a widow that had a, a child that he rose from the dead. Different places. Jesus and so did Peter the apostles raised people from the dead. But now, them raising from the dead was not the last resurrection or the final coming of our Lord because they arose in the same body that they died in. Now, this is part of what we're going to be speaking on. Now, you've got to understand, first of all, Jesus did die in the same body that he arose the third day. Now, the reason he came back in that same body, rose out of the grave, or the tomb rather, is because his body was not made out of the dust of the ground and it had no corruption about it and God wasn't about to leave that body in the grave and neither suffer to see corruption. So the third day he was risen and thank God appeared to the eleven and told them that all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And if you remember, thank God he took that body out of here and it entered right back into the glory that it came out of. Now it's a mystery for the world but it's easy to understand when you know a little bit about the revelation of Jesus that he was not made out of the dust of the ground but as we said in our last program he was God in the flesh and he took that flesh and blood upon him and purchased the church with his own blood. So he did raise in the same body that died, but I'm going to be showing as we're going along, we will not come up in this body that we die in. So this is going to take a little time, so be sure to stay with me. But right now, I want to especially show us that when Jesus does return, in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, your Bible teaches you the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now why it said rise first, it don't mean the first resurrection, but it meant before the living saints could be changed and go up to meet the Lord in the air. Well, the dead had to rise first. Then we that are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them, with the dead, to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we ever be with the Lord. So when it said the dead in Christ arise first, it wasn't talking about the first resurrection. You need to know these things. I'm going to show you as we're going on when and who was in the first resurrection. We've been on it before, but children, there's so much deceiving. And they're teaching you two or three comings of the Lord. And they're teaching that when Jesus comes back, now they're saying that ain't the second time, but it's a sneaking away of the church that he will raise up 144,000 Jews to preach to Israel and save that nation while the rest of the world's going through the tribulation. And then after seven years, he's coming back again and setting up the government kingdom upon earth. Now children... A lot of this that you're hearing out of them is nothing but the imagination. But if you'll study the Bible, then you'll know what the kingdom of God is. And it's not, most definitely not the natural land. It's not the, the flesh of humans or anything like that. But what is the kingdom of God? If you study the Bible, Romans 14, 17 said it's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. That is a heavenly place in Christ called the kingdom of God. See, it ain't got nothing to do 
but it lives in flesh and blood. See, you and me, if you're born again. And when Jesus in Luke, I believe, uh, 20th chapter, when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom would come, well, he told them it don't come with observation. See, that means an outward show. But he said, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So children, if you don't study these things out, then they're going to fool you. And you're going to believe like 90% or more that you're going to load up and go to the Middle East Jerusalem someday and rule there, which it's never going to happen. Now, if you want to visit there, that's fine. But that ain't where Jesus is going to rule from. You're going to have to know the truth. Matter of fact, He's reigning now in the church, which is His people. So we're going to have to know these things. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to show us the future resurrection and as God is my helper, that resurrection is a catching away of the church. Not the raptures they're teaching the theory. And Jesus Christ will not return till a man of sins on earth and fulfilling his work. And then Christ destroys him with the brightness of his coming. But it's also called a final resurrection. And I'll prove that. Because there are dead people coming out of there in glorified bodies. And we that are alive are going to be changed at the same time and everybody goes up together to meet the Lord and as far as the goats or the sinners and whoever's name's not in Jesus' book of life, honey, they're going into the second death, the lake of fire. Now all that happens at the second, not the third or fourth, but second coming of our Lord Jesus. So you've got to understand from the time that he was on earth in the flesh and suffered and died and rose, entered back into heaven, and when he came back on the day of Pentecost, after his resurrection, right there started the reign of Christ on earth. And at the same time, I know it's a deep thing, but he laid hold on the dragon at his death which is that world ruling power the kings have with death and put a wound up on it for 1,000 years. And after the 1,000 years expired, then, Revelation 20, Satan would be loosed out of his prison. See, go out to deceive, which he's doing now. But in the meanwhile, children, we're overlapping and you better believe the powers is being loose. But the good news is, Jesus didn't say nowhere that he would only reign a thousand years and then quit and go back to heaven. They don't know what the reign is, but it is the Holy Ghost in you. And he'll rule in his church until the church is gone. And children, the church is not leaving here till the last day. And that's your final resurrection too. So there's a lot I'm going to be getting into. I know it's bringing you a lot at once, but we have to know these things. But in the meanwhile... I want you to hear the testimony of a little sister in the Lord by the name of Martha that really loved Jesus and so did her dead brother that had died, Lazarus, and her other little sister, Mary, three little disciples that loved their Lord. And I want you to hear a little bit of the story if you remember. Lazarus, their brother, was sick unto death. And, of course, Jesus, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he didn't take off to heal him right quick. He wanted him to die for the glory of God to show God had the power to raise the dead. But also, you need to hear a little testimony of his sister. So let's just go, if you will, to the book of St. John chapter 11. And uh, I'd love to just read you the whole chapter, but you'll have to read that on your own because I'm on the resurrection and remember, Lazarus was sick unto death. But I want you to go with me to this 11th chapter now of St. John. And you read it all, but I'm going to start at verse 11. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, see, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Now that's a language of God there. Then said his disciples, see, listen how they thought it meant. If he sleep, he shall do well. How be it? 
Jesus spoke of his death. See, to Christ, him being God, sleeping means dead until I raise him. But see, when you hear it out of your natural hearing, they thought he was talking about actually going to bed and taking him a nap because when you're sick, it's hard to sleep. But Jesus says, Lazarus sleep, and they said, well, then he must be doing well if he's sleeping. But Jesus had to explain it. Now watch this. How be it, verse 13, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent. Here's a reason. You may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples. See? Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem about three or about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning the brother because he's dead. Then Martha, thank God, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, now watch, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Now children, I know one time Jesus told little Martha because she was uh, cooking, doing everything and Jesus was teaching and little Mary, instead of helping Martha, she sat down at the feet of Jesus. In other words, give him time, which most people won't do now, but she sat down at his feet to hear the word. And Martha came to Jesus, if you remember, and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister here won't help me. In other words, I'm doing all this work and she's not helping me. And Jesus told her, said, Martha, you're troubled and you're cumbered about many things. But said, Mary's chose that good part that will not be taken from her. In other words, I'm not going to go against somebody that wants to sit down long enough to hear my words. Come on, children. Now, Jesus was not condemning Martha because you better believe Martha had faith. Look what she did here. Then said Martha, verse 21, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. In other words, if he hadn't have stayed away, he would have got his healing. But I know, thank God, that even now whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Isn't that something? Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now see, he planned on going and raised him literally out of that grave or tomb. And of course, when he came out of there, he was all wrapped up and Jesus said, Loose him. So he came up out of the tumor in the same body that he died in. So that wasn't the last resurrection or nothing. But watch Martha here. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So you see, children, when did Jesus teach the resurrection? As the last day. Now, I've got to prove it. I know I've been on this before, but you need to hear it again. Out of the book of St. John, chapter 6, Hold this place though. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him that sent me. And Jesus said this is the Father's will which has sent me that of all which is given me I should lose nothing, thank God, but should raise it up again when? At the last day. 
And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And here it is again. I will raise him at the last day. And then as we read in verse 54, Jesus said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And thank God I'll raise him up when? At the last day. So children, the second coming of Jesus ends it all. That is your last day. That will be the resurrection of the just and the unjust. Honey, as God is my helper, I wouldn't lie on him for nothing. Even the kingdom could not begin to rule until Jesus died in the body and rose the third day and entered back into glory. And then only could he deliver up the kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy, by giving his own life as a sacrifice. And then he came back in the spirit and there's when he set up his kingdom. I know they teach it out in the future, but Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is that new birth, children, the regeneration. It don't matter what they teach you, the second coming, the next coming of Jesus Christ will wipe it out. That's the end of it, children. Martha even said, I know, Lord, that my brother will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, listen to Jesus. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now listen. Lazarus was dead. And he believed in the Lord. You've got a lot of Christians that died believing in the Lord. What did Jesus mean? Whosoever lives. You notice how he said it? You're living. That means in him. And believes in me, see there, thank God, shall never die. Believest thou this? Never die means eternally. Sure, we're going to put off this body. We're going to die in the body. Or if the Lord come, you're still going to put it off. But he's talking about tasting the second death. We will never see that eternal death. We're going to see the eternal glory and life that Jesus gives us with giving us everlasting life in the Spirit. Then He'll change our vile body like His glorified body in the future at that final resurrection. Now, i got to prove this, so go with me. You at home, mark these things down so you can study it. Out of the book of Luke, I believe it's the 20th chapter, And I'm going to start at verse 27 and listen to me. We've got a lot today of Sadducee preachers which don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe much of nothing. Now, you think it ain't in the churches? You better believe it. And let me tell you something. What people teach you is wrong. When they teach you not only once in grace, always. Now you can stay in grace and you'll make it through. But one thing also understand. They're teaching in the land today and there's different branches of churches doing it. They teach that when you die or the moment of your death, when you uh, die in other words, you're immediately You're not going to be put in a grave, your body will and all that, but you're immediately getting your reward, going into heaven, get your reward, and live eternally and all this and that. So children, is it true? The answer is no. There is a resurrection of the D-E-A-D. There is a future when Jesus' words will fulfill in the book of St. John, just hold this place, I've got to prove it, children, that there is, when they lay you in that grave, 
Now, your spirit goes back to God. This body goes back to dust. But believe it or not, you will come up out of that grave, but not in this body, but in a body that God allows you and gives you. So that's a deep thing to study out. But let me give you the mouth of Jesus to prove the graves will open in the future. In the book of St. John chapter 5, verse 28, watch it. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, come on, and shall come forth. Is that a resurrection? You better stay with me. I'm going to show you. And shall come forth. Here's your answer. They that have done good unto what? The resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Children, believe it or not, at the next appearing, this coming of the Lord will not only raise the Christians and take them to meet the Lord in her with the living Christians, changing them and so forth, but what happens to the goats and sinners? If you read Matthew 25, Verse 31, all of this take place, children, as God is my helper at His next coming. And Jesus will be coming in power and great glory. And He'll sit up on the throne of His glory and all nations will be brought before Him. That's when He separates them at the resurrection. Study your Bible. The sheep go on His right hand, the goats go on the left. The left is representing the lake of fire or the everlasting punishment. Now you can find that in Matthew 25, 31. It all happens at His coming. And why I'm getting this through to us, you don't have the time the world's teaching you. God help us. Jesus said when He gave the signs of His coming, look up, lift up your heads. Your redemption draws near. Now, go with me to the book of Luke chapter 20. Now listen, you will never, never taste of that new world to come until you are resurrected or the Lord comes in your change. We will not get that new heaven, neither the new earth, until the final coming of the Lord and children, that earth will be just like our new bodies. It'll never vanish away anymore. But this earth you're on, this heaven you're looking up at, all of it's going to vanish away. But we're looking for a new heaven, a new earth, and that's the greatest privilege you've got. Now watch this, because you've got a lot of Sadducees just like these here. Now go with me to the book of Luke chapter 20 in your own Bible, verse 27. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny, see, there is any resurrection, and they ask him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, having a wife, and he die without children, listen to that now, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now he's telling Jesus what Moses said. There were therefore, Seven brethren, now notice this, and the first took a wife and died without children. The second took her to wife and he died childless. The second brother took the first brother's wife after he died trying to get children. And so they said he died childless. The third took her and in like manner, the seven also, all seven brothers were married to this one little woman. And every one of them died not having any children. Now watch this. Bible said the uh, third took her and in like manner the seven also. And they left no children and died. So here's a question. Last of all, the woman died also after seven brothers, marrying them all, she died. So here's a question the devilish Sadducees is asking Jesus. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? 
For seven had her to wife. Now remember, they didn't believe in a resurrection. But they're wanting to tempt him, see? Accuse him so they needn't fault. Just like the devil's loose now trying to find fault against everybody. But in the resurrection, whose wife is she, Lord? All seven had her. That's a good question, isn't it? Well, listen to his answer. And Jesus answering said unto them, the children of this world, that's your flesh and blood, the earth your own now that we're made out of. The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be what? Read it with me. Accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead. So see, you cannot obtain that world until the resurrection. Either you'll be changed, caught up with him, or you'll be dead and rise first and go up with the living to meet the Lord in the air, and then we're going to get that new world. Now, my time's about up, but watch this. So Jesus said, but they shall, that are counted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection of the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being what? The children of the resurrection. So see, children, you're not going to know your wives or your children. The former things pass away. Now, I'll get more into this, but be sure to stay with me because children, we're going to have to know truth so we won't get in that confused bunch. One more appearance going to settle it out. So till we see in our next program, write us in your prayer request. Stay with me in these messages because I'm going to get more into this to let us know there's a better day. God bless you in Jesus' name. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. And may God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children, I want to say greetings again and welcome everybody back to the program today. And I hope you've been with me in our last few programs. I'm getting into the message of the resurrection of the dead, which for us will be in the future 
But I'm also going to be showing you as we're going along, there was a resurrection of the dead that came out of the graves after Jesus' resurrection. And the Bible declares plainly who they are. So we need to know these things, children, because there's so much controversy against the truth of God that if we don't study to be approved, then we can be confused. And remember one thing, God is not the author of confusion. What?